just <clears throat> to show you if somebody don't, doesn't know where the Carpathian in Beijing is, it is in the middle of the Europe, or almost in the middle of it. Uh, actually, I have uh, collected a very nice uh, range of uh, beautiful bird visualization from the Bronze Age of the Carpathian Basin material to show you how diverse uh, these uh, visual, visualization can be. Now I, uh, first of all, work or deals with the pottery finds. And uh, you can see that they also have a high diversity, different kinds of birds. And uh, what the, what the uh, zooarchaeological zoo uh, investigation proves, <coughs> that the Bronze Age list, the Bronze Age birds in the Carpathian Basin were mostly waterfalls, wading birds, diurnal birds of prey, and terrestrial species, such, such as the back black grouse, crane, and great bustard. Uh, what you can see in the uh, pottery finds or the, the clay birds representation, it shows that the alien visualization were, was uh, quite uh, limited. So, for example, uh, from, our, uh, from my previous research, when I studied the uh, birds, uh, uh, clay birds, uh, artifacts of the Bronze Age, I found that no birds of prey uh, was uh, depicted, and uh, rather waterfalls, or more, or rather, uh, terrestrial species, which means that uh, the birds, uh, first of all, uh, had a connection, not the sky, but first of all with the water, or maybe uh, the earth. And uh, we also found that the, uh, the, these clay pottery uh, birds uh, are rattles, vessels, containers, mostly, and uh, so-called ascos. Uh, colleagues found that these bird-shaped rattles and vessels take the majority of these uh, finds because 80% of, of the birds' uh, pots generally bird-shaped rat rattles or vessels. Uh, if we investigate the forms, the, yes, the forms of the birds, we found that they are very different. I mean, these uh, potteries depict very different birds. There are hardly any uh, similar among them. So they depicted uh, the birds, even if the same birds, in a very different uh, way. So no close analog analogies among these artifacts. Uh, the other result was that the birds from the, which, which uh, comes from the settlements uh, differ from the birds which come from uh, cemeteries only in number. And uh, uh, there is, uh, we, could, we couldn't detect any regularities, any rule if there, is a, uh, if there is a difference between the settlement and the, and the cemetery uh, artifacts. Um, birds are all, always uh, believed to be uh, escort of the deceased person to help them to get uh, the other world after they died. But uh, those birds uh, generally have uh, uh, wings. These birds have no wings. These bird sports have no wings. And uh, there are very, very few inside one cemetery. We have beautiful collections, but we shouldn't, be, shouldn't forget that the Bronze Age lasted more than 1,100 years. So it means that uh, to compare to this long period, actually we have very, very few artifacts. I just mentioned three cemeteries uh, because the, the uh, beautiful uh, hall uh, artifacts came from them. Uh, 50 graves and uh, one bird. Uh, 50, ba no, sorry, 50 graves and only birds from one grave. Actually, there were three letters from one bird, but still it is only one single grave. Another 50, also one. one the, the, the most famous cemetery, Middle Bronze Age cemetery, uh, is uh, Dunapentala, which has more than 1,000 
graves, and still we had only one bird which we can mention. Uh, unfortunately, it was excavated in the 50s, so you cannot be too sure that it is really one single bird, but still, if it is 10 birds, it is not much to compare to the high number. So I don't think uh, that these birds uh, uh, symbolized, uh, the, uh, as, uh, symbolized the escort uh, of the deceased. No flying positions also, as I mentioned. They just uh, birds which, are, which seems to be relaxed or sitting on the ground, so not in a flying position. We have just a single thing in flying position. These are pendants but no other uh, birds' depictions are in flying positions. So maybe they have connection not the sky or in, in flying activity, but staying on the ground and connection to the ground. Uh, and uh, also, if we uh, check the ethnographical material, because what can a prehistorian do just to try to find some uh, analogies among the ethnographic records, uh, we found that th those birds which don't like flying but staying on the on the earth, on the soil, on the ground, they uh, are supposed to have a connection with the earth and not with the sky, as generally uh, said. And uh, if we compare the organic material we find in the in the uh, in the settlements and uh, in the cemeteries, uh, we find something similar, uh, and it means that the birds were more valuable uh, from cultural point of view than mm -hmm. as meat provisions. So that was the basic information which I could collect from the investigation of birds' artifacts, because we have anthropomorphized birds, but very few, so that's why I needed uh, widening the, uh, the study. Uh, if we try to uh, study the bird-human relationship in visualization in the ceramic uh, object, uh, we have these four categories, that bird with human feet or legs, and human with bird face or bird mask, uh, bird, uh, mask as it is supposed in many times, or bird with human face and the bird body with female breast. Then I show you some nice uh, uh, artifacts from this uh, categorization. Birds with human feet are takes the majority of these anthropomorphized birds uh, in the archaeological material, and there are many rattles among them. And these rattles, I don't think that they are toys be because they are often uh, mentioned or they are often assumed that they might be toys for children, but they are fragile. And uh, you can understand if a small children who likes playing with the, with the rattle, they don't, uh, they break the neck and the head of this bird very easily. So they are not meant. And many of them, which you can see in these slides, comes from cemeteries. So actually they are meant uh, for the dead person and certainly not a dead, uh, not a dead children. Uh, when we uh, uh, see these birds uh, depictions or these birds wrestlers, uh, there, is, uh, uh, there is the question, are these real birds? Can uh, uh, ornithologists uh, uh, define the species of these birds? It's possible at all or not? So I certainly I try to ask uh, colleagues to, 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 to try to find out which species they might be, but uh, they don't like giving uh, direct uh, answers. But generally, <laughs> it's familiar to, for us, I think. But uh, they generally like to say that they are uh, water birds. They look like water birds, but uh, I think uh, so I took the time and tried to find in the Carpathian Basin ornithological list or catalog to find which is the best uh, similar to them. And actually, I found that it is not, the, not uh, uh, a waterfall, 
but rather the bastard. The bastard is a big uh, uh, bird in the Carpathian Basin. Now it is on the rarity, rarity list, but still it's quite a big, with big body. But it doesn't like uh, flying at all because of it has big body, but like running and uh, moving on the on, on the ground first of all. Uh, the other question, uh, what comes uh, studying these uh, uh, birds with human legs, because uh, you may see that first I saw that these these are not human legs because uh, just for the stability of these uh, small figurines, that's why they ha they uh, the pottery made this way. But then uh, I noticed that uh, these legs has fingers, and certainly these fingers are not like the bird uh, feet, but like the the human uh, human fingers. So many of them, the, if you have a closer look at them, many of them are really human fingers. So these legs are really, really human legs. And if these are human legs, might, what might have been the purpose to give human legs birds uh, uh, anyhow? So maybe they just wanted, they, uh, the makers just wanted to express that uh, these birds are equal beings with the humans and maybe they might uh, something common with the beliefs with the notion of animism so they were uh, ritually animated or how to express it so i don't like uh, going to the anthropological field as an archaeologist because i am an archaeologist but uh, I think this is the second possibility which we can say that it was intentionally, they were intentionally made human legs to, to express their uh, human uh, sense of these uh, birds as well. I, uh, I work with the Bronze Age, but now I show you some beautiful uh, um, archaeological finds from the earlier period to show that this what I was talking about or the anthropomorphic features are not the privilege of the Bronze Age of the, in the Carpathian Bison. This is a famous uh, artifact which was found in a grave and it is believed to have bird body and, uh, and human legs which cannot be seen quite well in this photo but you must believe me that it is a, <laughs> it is a human it, it is hum, they are it, it has human legs uh, and it comes from a very early period because it is from the fifth millennium bc of the carpathian basin the second categorization uh, from this uh, point of view is that humans with bird face or bird mask uh, this is uh, we have very, very few, hardly any, uh, this type of uh, artifacts in the Carpathian Basin, but uh, I am proud to put the Dupiaya cart uh, with these uh, famous uh, birds and uh, the famous uh, um, figurines uh, into the Carpathian Basin, because actually it is in the Carpathian Basin. And, um, and uh, the, this bird face or bird mask, uh, raise the question and uh, they might have uh, uh, represented a, a shamanistic type of uh, beliefs uh, or not. Uh, unfortunately, there are very strong uh, critics, critics against uh, interpreting these as bird face because uh, these who are against them believe that it is the reason that the nose is a prominent feature of the face and it is just only overemphasized. Uh, it might be true, certainly, uh, but uh, if we have a look at uh, some uh, representation, for example, in the same period, the Bronze Age, these are the famous uh, Shivik or Chivik, Chivik uh, stones where you can see uh, human beings and something which also looks like human, but still they have very different heads. So it means that uh, these, these heads uh, look like and quite o often in uh, interpreted as bird woman or bird, uh, bird man. 
because there are human beings here and you can see that they they are different and uh, if you want to i just put two pictures of a bird mask or bird uh, feature uh, uh, having on the head uh, uh, in the picture in the slides to show that uh, it might have been something similar if they were really bird. However, if we go back uh, to the earlier times, you, you, you know these famous Lascaux paintings. I just show you because it is also strongly criticized and, and certainly I don't want to uh, talk about it just to show and maybe it is really just overemphasized, but uh, the earlier time in the Neolithic period, uh, from example, from the Winter culture. So here there are such small figurines or representations, the so-called bird lady or lady bird, which I don't think that's the overemphasizing or, of the nose of a human face. So they really uh, seem to be a real bird or duck face or duck, yes, duck head and uh, not just uh, uh, a simple represent, a simple um, producing uh, of a human, fa human head or human face. And uh, we have a very unique uh, object in the Carpathian Basin, uh, birds with human face, uh, a bird actually with human face, uh, an escoy, uh, which actually is an escoy, but uh, with a bird body, but uh, human uh, face. And uh, the escoy are well, well known for the Southeastern European archaeologists because there are tremendous escoy everywhere. But we have no other analogy, analogy uh, with the human face. And, uh, and also the purpose of the escoy or the, uh, the use of escoy in uh, in uh, settlements or cemeteries, because we find them in the settlements and we find them in cemeteries as well. So we know, we just uh, believe that they were really ritual uh, uh, vessels. Uh, unfortunately, we have only single uh, example when they found uh, something in the Ascoy and investigated it, and they found that it is it might have been animal blood. So it comes from a, uh, it comes from a, uh, a grave. Uh, I try to find out the the original purpose of the escoy. Uh, I mean, as a ritual vessel, but actually the origin uh, is. Uh, I don't think that it it can be uh, it can it can be said exactly. Uh, which area was uh, its original uh, uh, place. Uh, I think uh, the whole South uh, East Europe uh, full of escorts and from, uh, from the early beginnings as well. There are uh, opinions that uh, the escorts was found in the, or discovered or yes, invented in, uh, in uh, the Kikladik, but uh, we have much, much older uh, pieces uh, from other side of uh, Southeastern Europe. And uh, maybe the early finds uh, which, uh, whose figure, the, the, the body of the vessels uh, seems, to be, seems to, to be similar to a bird vessel. Maybe it actually doesn't represent or doesn't depict the bird, but, uh, oh, oh, sorry, but uh, uh, another type of ascoi which, uh, uh, which uh, actually the, was made uh, from the stomach of an animal. I don't know the English, the correct English word, which uh, also have similar, uh, the, 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 the line of the body is similar to a line of, of, a, of a bird, that's why when it, is not uh, the details are not so many on it you cannot make a difference between them so in the earlier type this type of uh, ascoy i don't think that you can say that if they are bird or not uh, or the other type and these are also comes from the very early period the protosesco which is, is, is 7000 
before Christ. So it is quite early. Uh, this uh, map, uh, I show this map because I just want to emphasize that uh, these uh, triangles, the black triangle shows the spread of the escoy. And uh, uh, you can see that escoy cannot, uh, cannot be found the other part of uh, Northern Europe from this from, to, to, to Northern part to further north uh, from the Carpathian Basin. So maybe the Carpathian Basin is the last territory where the As Ascoy was spread. Uh, generally, the archaeologists say that the Ascoy has a south <coughs> eastern or southern origin. That's why they have a certain connection, uh, a certain connection with the god idea, an anthropomorphic god idea. But also at the same time as we have uh, and sorry, I just go back to the, the rattles and other bird vessels, which are very diverse, but there are many of them. You can see them that uh, you can find them in the, the northern part, further north from the Carpathian Basin. So uh, we believe that there, are, there might have been two main beliefs uh, uh, alongside with each other during the Carpathian, in the Carpathian Basin during the Bronze Age. That's maybe the, a little bit animistic uh, when, they, uh, um, when they use the birds uh, as uh, when, they, when, they, uh, when they consider the birds as uh, 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 equal with, the, with human. And the other is, uh, is, uh, might have been similar to the god, god imagination. And now here are the, the famous uh, uh, as course, with, with uh, human face, uh, we have similar human face from the Troia about a bit earlier times, so which shows we know that uh, there might have been good communication between them. And there are two beautiful examples from the earlier period, early Neolithic, which is same with bird face, with the human face, a bird body with human face, uh, quite early. Another one, middle Neolithic, bird body with human face as well. And uh, we have a very unique one, which, is, uh, which has no face, but has female uh, genitalia. So we have two, uh, with two breasts. So whether it might mean that uh, these uh, Ascors uh, represented female uh, beings or it is just uh, by chance or not by chance, but it is just a single or uh, few expression that it can be, it might have been male and female as well. Uh, unfortunately, there are no analogies for them. And uh, my conclusion can be after uh, investigating the stereomorph for anthropomorphic birds that. Uh, uh, it's very difficult to uh, uh, offer any general ideas about them because there are too few of them. And uh, they might have uh, participated also in, in uh, shamanistic beliefs because uh, the Ascos, Ascoi also uh, assumed uh, to contain uh, such hallucinogenic uh, liquid which helped uh, the shaman or the person uh, to, 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 to their uh, vision quest or vision travel. And uh, they might represent two belief systems, uh, the Ascoy and other bird shapes, uh, bird and the human, with human legs. And uh, also they might represent it certain, they might have participated in uh, uh, such rituals which, uh, which uh, has a connection with, the trans with some transition. So that's why uh, maybe in the burials or in the funeral rituals, they played uh, such, uh, such important uh, role, these uh, birds with human legs or this, uh, this one. And if these are uh, animated beings which have the shaman or just it was believed for the people who, who believed that the whole world around them were equal with humans. We don't know exactly. Thank you for your attention.